Well, now let's see what the local papers have to say. The Limerick leader is hopeful. Limerick fancied to win what will be a physical tie, writer John O'Shaughnessy says. With Wexford having a reputation for toughness and steely determination, the Limerick selectors have settled for a combination which they believe is best equipped for this latest battle. However, with everyone expecting Limerick to run out easy winners, manager Eamon Cregan is not looking beyond Sunday, warning his players about being too complacent, pointing out that there was nothing at all certain about a berth in the semi-finals. Cregan adds that although Wexford were easily beaten in the Leinster final against Kilkenny, they were in a way the authors of their own downfall, with some bad first-half misses. If they have that failing corrected on Sunday, our lads will know that they're in a game. Despite being regarded as the underdogs, there is no shortage of confidence in the Wexford camp. The Wexford people's lead is the upbeat comment from selector Davy Morris, who says, this is going to be our one. Morris confidently predicts, on Sunday, we are going to achieve our goal and continue on our path to win this All-Ireland. And adds that despite being heavily beaten by Kilkenny, I have total confidence in the lads playing Limerick. However, writer David Williams shows some caution, saying Limerick were unlucky not to get at least a draw against Tipperary in the Munster final. Though Limerick's confidence is still high, following inspirational wins against Cork and Waterford, former Wexford captain Martin Storey says, one good performance and the model county could be readying themselves for another championship rematch, this time against Tipperary. Well, we wait to see if all that's going to happen. The team's out on the pitch. Now, there has been a dinner Ella on the Wexford team, but Declan Ruth has been declared fit, and he does take his place at right wing back on the side. Final thoughts from the panel here in studio. Pete Finnerty, have Wexford got what it takes to topple Limerick? Who, it has to be said, did look impressive during their championship campaign on Munster. They did. Limerick have improved with every outing, and even in the Munster final, there was only a puck of a ball between themselves and Tipperary. The only problem that Limerick have playing in Co Park is that a lot of the younger players wouldn't have played here already. Uh, Wexford are really playing at home here, and um, they've got a thrashing by Kilkenny, and knowing the pride that's in Wexford hurling, they'll come out blazing with all guns. They've made a lot of changes. Uh, the team is younger now, it's a team for the future, uh, but still have a bit of experience here of Larry O'Gorman, Adrian, Adrian Finlan, and players like that that will point away. I don't think that um, Wexford still have enough uh, done with the youth to be able to fill all the gaps that quickly. Limerick are more experienced. Uh, they're stronger, they've had a tougher campaign and even though it'll be, they'll be there thereabouts till 45 minutes or so, I think Limerick will pull away for a finish. All right, Pete, thank you very much for that. Let's go over to Croke Park then and pick up with our commentary on this second match from Joe Canning and Cyril Farrell. Where the temperature this afternoon is reportedly 22 degrees. It's quite humid. A lot of people in their shirt sleeves here. Quite a few people still coming in and some of the latecomers trying to find their seats in the new Hogan stand here, which hasn't made it all that terribly easy for the many stewards trying to cope with the late rush here. Let's have a check on the teams. Wexford really have gone for youth following their comprehensive drubbing at the hands of the All-Ireland champions, Kilkenny. The cornerbacks are now Rory Mallon and David O'Connor. Declan Ruth is fast fit to play at right half alongside the experienced Liam Dunn and Larry O'Gorman. Nicky Lambert is chosen at midfield. Will he play there? Let's see. While Darren Stamp is alongside the equally youthful Trevor Kelly in the half forward line. And Mitch Jordan has once again been moved, this time to right corner forward. He's been around full forward last year. Midfield in the Leinster final as well. And there is... Jordan, who uh, today will be playing in the championship for the tenth time. Limerick are back, of course, first time in five years. And today Limerick make a couple of personnel changes and several significant switches from the team that narrowly lost to Tipperary. Clem Smith is switched to the left corner of defence. Damien Reel comes in at right half with Brian Geary now in the centre. James Moran lines up alongside Kieran Carey in midfield. Mike O'Brien is repositioned at left half forward, while the inside line remains unaltered. It's James Butler, Brian Begley and Barry Foley. Foley, of course, is the captain. And uh, I can tell you that Wexford have won the toss and they're going to play from left to right in the first half. That's our understanding. A match which will be handled, of course, here by a Waterford official, and that is Michael Wadding. Big day for him. Four teams, sorry, five teams now left in the hunt for the Liam McCarthy Cup. And of course, we will know the draw for the semi-finals as soon as this particular match is over. Were Limerick to win? Well, 
Timmy Houlihan, the young goalkeeper, would not be facing Tipperary in the semi-final. It would indeed be Kilkenny, All-Ireland champions. And if Wexford were to just edge out the Munster runners-up, well, their fate would also be sealed. They would be not playing Kilkenny at the second time. It's not like the football we're going to have next weekend, because you know all about the draw there. Instead, they would be playing Galway. And there's Declan Ruth, past fit during the week indeed, and he comes in to play in his sixth championship match. He was part of the Wexford squad, that uh, the extended squad that is, that won the All-Ireland back in 1996. So they're itching to put another one over Limerick, of course. Big day for the Limerick fans as well as players, because they've travelled in their thousands. Difficult to estimate the crowd here, and they don't have an official figure just yet, but I imagine it's around about 30, 35,000. And all of the Limerick fans, well, a lot of them anyway, are up there on Hill 16 and in the stands as well. Lovely splash of colour. We heard there in the newspaper of clippings that Michael Lester was reading out for us that in Limerick they're expecting a physical tough battle, Cyril. Yeah, well, Limerick committed the game, they're very happy in a sense. Even though they were beaten in the Munster final, they feel themselves to play quite well and after having a very good campaign. Whereas Wexford would feel that they let the supporters down the last days, Kilkenny completely dominated. We're in the game for a while, but as Gareth Horner were com yeah, completely out but They're out to redeem themselves. Uh, Limerick can play a very fast type of hurling as such, and like it's Munster, it's hip and it's whip. Wexford would like to go down in every ball, like, you know, Wexford trying to redeem themselves. Limerick should win it, but Wexford have put a lot of new blood into this team, like, and it'll be interesting to see how they play. Let's hope it's a good match. of anticipation. It's not ready. Yeah, and uh, Trevor Kelly has gone into midfield he's the number 11 number five here of course is Damien Real came on to great effect in the Munster final that's one back there by Rory Mallon nice ball forward Rory McCarthy here one of the players they're going to look to one of the more experienced players at this stage taken back by Mark Fowler what a great left half back he is Ruth good catch up to Larry Murphy playing on the 40 as anticipated taking on Brian Geary Runs all the way through to Timmy Houlihan. From Limerick's collection of under-21s. Kieran Carey today picked a course in midfield. Penland was lashing it forward. It's Larry Murphy angling this one across here towards Mitch Jordan. Starting here on the left-hand side against Steve McDonough. Dangerous ball in there. It's a fantastic goal, you're out of the sky, Rhys, back of the net, you won't see a better one than that. And it's the perfect start for Wexford because they needed that after the last day. Only a minute gone, Mitch Jordan popping up on the left-hand side, and what about this for an absolutely brilliant finish? There was nothing that Timmy Oulihan could do to deny Rory McCarthy. Lovely wrist work, great decisiveness, and a smashing goal. It's as good a goal as we've seen in the championship. Here comes Ollie Moran. They're expecting big things from Ollie, but this one has gone wide. He had been one of their best forwards this year in the championship, but surprisingly in the Tipperary match, Monster finally only got one point, yeah, same Jerry, as Begley. He had a quiet game that day, he had two very good games before that, and they'll be looking for him today. Liam Dunn is a hardy man to be on him, they'll want him to break the ball through. That's a bad miss for Limerick, because it's a perfect start for Wexford, the crowd are on their feet already, you could, you're going to have a great game. Wexford playing against a slight breeze in this first half. 
That was a really devastating finish by Rory McCarthy. I think the point has been made, and I was just emphasising it as well, that players like Larry O'Gorman, Liam Dunn, Adrian Fenlon and Rory McCarthy, these are the fellows who've got the experience now, and they've got to try and bring the younger players through. That's a bit of a pile-up. Darrell Ryan was coming across there, so too was Liam Dunn, and it's Limerick who will get the free. In all probability, Derek George was actually Darrell Ryan, I'd say that foul. Liam Dunn got the ball, Darrell Ryan pushed the Limerick lad out of the way, so it's a, it's a soft free for Limerick as such. But it's an important one, and it'll be Mike O'Brien who will step up to take it. Perhaps it's Paul O'Grady, in fact. They're leaving it to Paul O'Grady to try strike this one in. 17 points in four championship matches. Maximum concentration. And he's put it right. It's another bad miss. Not a good start by Limerick, but early stages. Yes, yeah, two wides now, Duran. They don't need that, you know. Like usually, they fall is very accurate. That's a bad, bad, bad wide. And it lets Limerick off to, or it lets Wexford off the hoop. They're off the hoop, but Wexford are off the mark. Damien Fitzhenry, huge puck out beyond Kieran Carey, down towards Larry Murphy, great catch. Striking it, is it dropping short? It is. Opportunity still, however. Timmy Hulham getting out there, three Wexford players surrounding him. Mitch Jordan is trying to take it away from him, so too is Paul Codd. And the keeper has it again. And it's going to be a free in. Yeah, they're over carrying the such, and it could have gone either way there, but like that ball should have been cleared. And like this should put Wexford four points up. It's the perfect start, and Paul Codd will come across to hit this one. Very experienced player. So far, he has scored 54 points in his career with Wexford. Nicky Lambert waiting inside there. He's been marked by TJ Ryan. Remember, he was picked in midfield, but he plays at full forward. Paul Cott striking for Wexford and striking it accurately. His first three, his first point, and it's a dream start by the Slaney Siders who lead by 1-1 to no score. Ricky Lambert is a big man in there, Jerry, and he's trying to upset uh, he's trying to upset TJ Ryan as such. As he stands over six feet tall. Kieran Carey benefiting from this puck out. Well directed to him. Dropped down there by the fullback Darrell Ryan. Supported here, however, by Liam Dunn. Didn't strike it all that well. Mark Foley. Darren Stamp is around there as well, trying to drag it forward somehow. Comes back instead, however, to Clem Smith. The other man on the left wing, Mark Foley, crossing sides. There's James Moran. Good start once again here by Damien Fitzhenry. Great clearance. Great lively start to this. Excellent hurling. Clem Smith whipping it back into the centre. Adrian Fenlon there, benefiting from that slack pass. Driving it high, driving it well, and driving it over the bar. Great score, Jerry. Needed that after the last day because straight from midfield. He had a full game for his own standard last day. It was a brilliant score. Just worth watching this one again here. Adrian Fenlon from the Rapparees Club. Just getting the distance. Again, Limerick trying to profit by a little bit of pushing there. Holly Moore was in the thick of the action and Limerick have themselves a free. Now they're looking for their first score and once again it's Paul O'Grady who will take it. Paul O'Grady from Patrick's Well. He was on the 1998 intermediate um, winning team. O'Grady. 45 metres out. This is struck well. With great accuracy, Limerick get their first point. Still very early stages of the match. Of a good of a rip-roaring contest. Fenlin with that excellent point just moments ago. There.